I've got my book here, The Nature of Socialism and the Proper Role of Government, uh, subtitled Magnifying the Teachings of Frederick Bastiat. Frederick Bastiat was a, uh, a member of the General Assembly of France, which is like the United States Congress, back in the, oh, about 1847, 48, 49, and 50. And uh, as social legislation kept coming through the, uh, through the legislative body of France, he fought every piece of social legislation coming through. And, uh, and of course, at that time, in 1848, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, they wrote the Communist Manifesto, were contemporary of his time. So here was, Karl, here was uh, Frederick Badger, who wrote a book called The Law, exposing the fallacies of socialism and uh, exposing the, uh, the, the pure principles of individual liberty and freedom. Uh, so we had two opposing forces here. At that time, France was going through a revolution. Uh, just like we're going through now, uh, where the, you know, where Obama is passing all this social legislation, and um, so he fought it. Uh, I got to get back to where I was here, and so to understand more fully what is happening in the United States, we're going to go through. Uh, Excerpt from the Communist Manifesto of 1848, and you'll notice as I go through it that these things are exactly what's happening in our country at this time. To begin with, Karl Marx says, The theory of the Communists may be summed up in a single sentence, the abolition of private property. Now there's two ways to abolish private property. You have a communist revolution like in Russia in 1917, you just seize all private land, no more private property. Or, as has been happening in the United States at least since the 1930s, what you do is you keep passing new taxes, new regulations, licensing permits, so you get to the point where there are so many regulations on your private property, whether it's your business, your home, even your children, <coughs> in effect, you still have the title of the private property, the factory or your home or your car, but in reality, you don't own it because the essence of ownership is control. So if you don't have control over it, then you don't own it. So when you have to get a license and a permit, then uh, you're asking for permission to use the property. And um, so in, indirectly, the government has confiscated private property by way of regulation, licensing, and permits. Where every time you want to do something with your property, with your property, you have to go and get permission first. So when you have to go to your uh, public servant, your servant, mind you, you're the king supposedly, and you get permission to do something that you're supposed to have a God-given right to do. So he goes on. We communists are reproached with the desire of abolishing the right of personally acquiring property as the fruits of man's own labor which properly is alleged to be the groundwork of all personal freedom, activity, and independence. The, when you have true private ownership of property, we have to have actual control, and you don't have to get permission to do anything, and you don't have excessive property taxes on your home, you can stand up to the government, because there are no laws that allow the government in a truly free country to confiscate your property, interfere with it, take any control of it, so you can stand independent. Um, also, uh, if you have machinery, a factory, or, or a business where you can provide for your family, your home, uh, the necessities of life, because everything is private and the government by law or under the Constitution cannot interfere with you and your private property, you are truly independent, financially, economically, and politically. Uh, but that's no longer the case. And then you go on. And the abolition of all this... The abolition of this state of things is called by the bourgeoisie, meaning property owners, middle class, abolition of individuality and freedom, and rightly so. Now notice how bold he is. Rightly so, to take away private property. The abolition of, the, of middle class, individuality, independence, and freedom is undoubtedly aimed at. Now look what Obama is doing right now, and in the United States Congress, even the state legislators, and sometimes right here in your local community. They are abolishing your ability to be independent and to have control of your property 
by passing, you know, new laws. Every time they turn around, there's a new law they're passing, a new regulation, a new tax, a new code, a new uh, whatever. And um, what should really be happening is uh, if our servants in the state legislature or in Congress truly were looking out for our interests, they wouldn't be passing new laws. They would be repealing laws. Most of them should be repealed so we can truly be free again. Then it goes on, by freedom is meant under the present bourgeois conditions of protection, production, free trade, free selling, and buying. Now notice, he admits that if you're free to buy and sell and produce, then you're free. So what he goes on and he says, in one word, you reproach us with, the intent, with intending to do away with your property, precisely so, that is just what we intend to do. To me, it sounds like Obama. You must therefore confess that by individual you mean no other person than the middle class or bourgeoisie property owner, than the middle class owner of property. This person must indeed be swept out of the way and made impossible. I'm going to read that last part again. This person must indeed be swept out of the way and made impossible. To completely do away with anybody's right to own and control property which means you become a slave to the state. You depend, depend upon the state and state programs and so forth for your food, your clothing, your shelter, your education, your job. When you reach that point, you are truly a slave. But of course, we have, we're already headed in that direction in, in varying degrees, but in many areas to a great degree. In some areas, complete. Abolition of the family. Even the most radicals flare up the infam at, at this infamous proposal of the communists. So they want to abolish the family. Well, if you abolish private property, private production, and private ownership, then you lose the means to be independent financially and economically. You're not able to provide for your family, so the government takes control of your family. You're not able to provide for them. Uh, so that, that can destroy the family. And we see more and more in the schools and elsewhere that laws are being passed where the state, for almost any reason whatsoever, can come in and take your children away from you under various uh, arguments of abuse. And the word abuse can be stretched to mean anything. And how many people have had their children taken away from them because some neighbor made a false accusation? They never let you know who the neighbor was that gave the false accusation, so therefore in court, you don't have the, the, the opportunity to cross-examine the person who accused you of, of abusing your children. And then they take the children away and you may never see them again. <clears throat> so in reality, your children are not yours. They're actually wards of the state. They just don't come out and let you know that. Uh, then it goes on. The bourgeois family or middle class family will vanish as a matter of course when this complement vanishes and both will vanish with the vanishing of capital. And again, that, that's um, uh, taking away private property and so forth. Do you, uh, you charge us with wanting to stop the exploitation of children by their parents? Well, we just got through talking about that. You know, they make all kinds of false accusations. Uh, they've even reached a point where if they feel you're not feeding your kids properly, they'll take them away. But what their definition of being proper, prop, of taking care of your, feeding your children properly is can mean whatever they want it to mean. Um, okay. I mean, if your children, they may say, well, there's too much, too many, too many potato chips and candy and soda, and that's bad for the kids and their health. So, you know, you're abusing your kids, so we're going to take them away from you. And don't think that won't happen, because in some limited areas, it has already begun to happen. Uh... But you say we destroyed our, the most hollowed of relations when we replaced home education by social. What that means is the government will have control of your children by public schools uh, and the government will have a monopoly in education and so forth. But anyways, uh, what we're seeing here is, is in the United States here and in our state, we already have socialism. The only reason most people don't know it is because they don't know what socialism is. And, uh, but socialism is a very simple definition. It's economic control of people by government. Thank you.